Minecraft 1.20's first snapshot is officially now here, and it brings back the bundle, removes the brewing tab, and adds the cutest Minecraft mob we've ever seen. Isn't he just so adorable? But also, this update raises questions like why have they fixed bugs from five years ago, and how will the brand new bookshelf work with the enchanting table? There's lots to go through, but let's start by not doing that generic YouTuber thing where every single block is one apart and we look at them and analyze the textures. This is no way to look at new blocks because it's not how people actually use them, so we're not even in the right biome. So instead, we're gonna explain that we're in the right biome for doing something much more fun. Here is a village. Wow, looks like it's a jungle village now, you could say. In fact, you wouldn't have to say it because a hanging sign has already done the job for you. However, I think, uh, you know, it's interesting to look at the textures for new blocks, but in my opinion, this is one of the least important parts of a snapshot process because textures are one of the things that can and will change. In fact, I think bamboo has a decent likelihood too. I think that unlike mango Grove, which was a straight 10 out of 10 after they redesigned it. I think the bamboo is like an 8 or a 9 out of 10 for most people. It's a nice, it's a solid block. I really like the uh, the trap door as an example. I, I think it's a really solid looking block, but I don't think it's a perfect block set yet. So I can mention there is a brand new type of wood. That's really exciting. I can mention there are brand new signs and these hang, but these are mostly visual things. However, here's something interesting you didn't know about the hanging signs. They have much less space you could usually type. So if I try to put a sign text right here, I I can't even finish the word assign text. What is that? 10, 11 characters between it because you can only write 10 characters per sign line. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, well, apparently only eight, <laughs> only eight right there, as you can see. There is very limited space on these signs if you want to, I know, count up. You have to do it on multiple lines. That is the trade off for these hanging signs looking so amazing, is they have way less space. I actually assumed it would only be for the ones that are like this, but apparently no. Uh, wherever you're hanging your sign, you're gonna run into uh, just far less space, which is uh, kind of a fun thing. These are much smaller signs, uh, and uh, so I, I think that's part of what makes them so cute. They take up less space, they're more concise, and they should be used for labels, not for what people used to use signs for, which is the alternative to books, because we do have written books in Minecraft. I don't know where my written books are though, actually. I had them somewhere. Actually, where did I put them? Oh, they're in there, I'm an idiot. And to show you my written books, I'll quickly just preview my bundle. Oh, it all goes on the ground. <laughs> I guess that's the solution for, for touch controls because they finally added the bundle back to Java. The bundle was going to be a feature in 1.17, but they couldn't get it working with touch controls. And I guess the easy solution is you can bundle things in very easily like this, but rather than taking items out, instead, which you can still do from the inventory, you can also just spatter all over the ground, which is fun. Anyway, so uh, here is the, uh, here is a book uh, that explains what happens if you don't subscribe to the channel. Um, uh, you know, most YouTubers, they do the thing where they try to encourage you to subscribe. I'm just gonna threaten you if you don't subscribe, and that is probably a valid subscriber strategy. However, if I wanted to hide these books, let's say uh, there's a criminal trial against me and I really wanna bury the evidence, which is definitely legal in most jurisdictions, uh, then what I could do is I could hide these books amongst my other books in these bookshelves, because this is the chiseled bookshelf, and unlike the regular bookshelf, this is something where textures do matter, regular bookshelves are not logical bookshelves. If you look at them carefully, in fact, I have to kind of break this to make this true. If you look at a bookshelf carefully, you'll notice that it's a bookshelf on all four sides, which doesn't make any sense. How can this red book be here if there's a blue book over here, which is taking up the same space? Is that a book that is like a, you know, like a, a, a cuboid shaped and it's red on one side, blue on another? Who buys books like that for their specific bookshelf? Also, why is it a bookshelf on all four sides? If you put it up against a wall, are there just books you're never going to be able to use? The answer is it's a decorative block that has uses for the enchantment table, of course. However, um, the chiseled bookshelf is a real bookshelf in that it only has one side of books that you can see, like a regular bookshelf. <laughs> and like a regular bookshelf, it actually stores books. Here's the fun thing though, no matter what book you put on here, you can put enchanted books, or you can put written in books, or you can just put in regular books if you want. Uh, no matter which book you put in there, there's no way of knowing which book is in there. So if I fill all of these bookshelves up, you have no way of knowing how to get my, uh, you know, criminal case evidence out of there, which is going to be my legal defense uh, when it comes to it. But more seriously, it is very fun that you don't even know what you're picking up from a bookshelf until you dive in there. If you want to hide a book, I mean, I, I, this will be really annoying as a gameplay mechanic, you could hide your book somewhere amongst all these shelves uh, in a random place, and no one's ever going to know where to find it. However, here's my question. How does the, uh, how do the chiseled bookshelves, which look really good, by the way, uh, how do they actually uh, stand up 
Uh, it, look at that. It's kind of, it just it looks like a real bookshelf. I don't know why that's my standard for good, uh, but I think it is. Uh, but here's the question: Does it work the same way with an enchantment table? And the sad answer to that question is no. It might look like because this is two two six, right? Like, ooh, maybe we're getting something. Uh, but sadly, this is exactly the same as if we placed an enchantment table, which I'll prove to you by spitting it on the ground. Uh, if I place an enchantment table all the way over here, uh, distinctly far away from everything else, you'll notice it's the exact same two two six. Uh, there is no difference between using a chisel bookshelf and using no bookshelf whatsoever. This has really weird lore implications for Minecraft because it means that something about the bookshelf block, which doesn't have real books in it, as we've discussed, actually does have magical effects on an enchantment table. As you can see, now we've gone up from 226 to 348. Whereas actual books, even enchanted books, let me clarify, actual books do not have any effect on the enchantment table, which is very, very strange. What is it about the bookshelf design at Lups? Actually, I, I haven't tested it with fully uh, loaded out bookshelves here, so let's just quickly do that right now. This is 100% filled out bookshelves, and you can see it is still the same. So they do not care yet. Either, that's an oversight, I don't imagine it is, I think there is a weird lore implication to bookshelves having magical powers, and I don't know what to take from that. But I do know what to do, is to show you the rest of these blocks and items, because my, 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 my baby camel has grown up into an adult, and so that makes him worthless. Speaking of worthless camels, you're going to hate this, but if you attack a camel, they do not attack back. This was mentioned that they don't have a spit attack, they don't have any attack whatsoever. If you attack a camel, you're just a monster. I hate to tell you it, but it's true, and uh, yeah, by the way, speaking of, these things are huge, but let's not uh, show you on top of this guy right here. Let's show you on top of, on top of this one over here, because, oh god, you gotta get up. You gotta get up, camel. Because <laughs> when you're on camel, you can't be attacked by mobs. You are just too high up for any of them to do any damage to you, which is really, really cool. However, you need to be able to saddle a camel, otherwise he might just sit down on the ground without your consent, which is not very nice of them. Uh, yeah, these are absolutely crazy mobs. They are chunky, they are heavy, they're not meant to be nimble, so they strafe very poorly, and they've got a lot of downsides, but the biggest upside is, I mean, look at this face. Look at how adorable they are. And also, the fact that they obviously have this brick sprinting attack. Anyway, before I tell you more about this snapshot, I need to tell you about the fact that I'm recording this on the Java edition. Usually, as you know, I don't play the Java, but the Java snapshot came out first for this update, before the Bedrock beta and preview. This is called Snapshot 22W42A, uh, because it's the 42nd week, the first snapshot on the 42nd week of 2022, and uh, something similar will be coming out for Bedrock shortly. We expect it will have the same features, but maybe not, because there are some Java specific things in here. First of all, they fixed a bug from five years ago. Uh, one of them is quite important. It is the fact that leads would build up damage for falling mobs. I'm glad that's gone. But the other one is related to camels, weirdly enough. But the other thing that's really weird and Java specific, if we switch into creative here, you'll notice they made a really nice organization of the creative inventory. Or if you're a bedrock player, you'll say, wow, that's not organized. Why is there nine tabs? Why is there four at the top and five at the bottom? This is terrible. But yeah, you'll see they've got new uh, inventory uh, icons, but also they just removed uh, uh, some tabs altogether. So uh, redstone and transportation have been merged together. I don't know why they were ever separate. Um, you can also tell that they removed brewing as a tab. There is no longer a brewing tab in the creative inventory, which I think makes a lot of sense. In fact, I think most of this is pretty good. Like consumables is a logical way to combine food and... Uh, you know, uh, uh, potions in my opinion. You consume the potion. I mean, do you consume a splash potion? I'd say yeah, as in you use it up entirely. Uh, then we've got combat, which is everything that has like aggressive principles. We've got the tools here, which is a little bit less well defined. I mean, some of the transports ended up here, I guess because it's a tool. You'll also notice the decorations tab has been replaced with nature blocks, so the wood blocks themselves, i.e. not the things you build out of them, the wood blocks are in here, the various plants and whatnot. There's kind of a natural block tab, and there is a building block tab, uh, just like there is on Bedrock. In some ways, this is bringing Bedrock and Java a little bit closer together, uh, but there is still nine tabs on Java versus four on Bedrock. Uh, then, of course, there's the search, which also functions as the all blocks tab, and uh, I think this is much better organized. Like, within the tabs, you can see they've now moved all the oak together, all the birch together, all the bamboo together, for example. Uh, I, I think in general, they made really good changes to the creative inventory, and apparently half of Minecraft players play creative only, so this is really positive news for you, as soon as you can get used to it. But yeah, also, the apple has been replaced with the carrot as the icon for food, which is interesting. What do you think should be the most iconic icon to represent food? I would argue probably the cooked beef, uh, which is weirdly called the stiak. 
of it on Java Edition for some reason. Uh, I think the cooked beef might be the best representation. Maybe a pork chop, uh, raw or otherwise. Um, maybe even a cake might do a better job. Uh, but carrots and apples both feel a little bit weird to fulfill this role. What, what do you reckon? That's a question Mojang themselves have to solve. Um, but yeah, so the creative inventory has been changed. And also, uh, some of the things that have changed in this update. Um, I, we're going to have to do the very brick, uh, brief rundown here and say, look, hanging signs. There's 10 variants of them. Well, there's, there's 30 variants of them because they come in side hanging, they come in a bottom hanging, and they come in top hanging. Isn't that wonderful? My camel certainly agrees. Man, the camel looks so cool when you saddle them upright. Like, this little thing on the middle allowing you to do... T I, I think it's a cool mob. Um, but yeah, so um, we also have the chiseled uh, bookshelf. Chiseled bookshelf is really, really interesting, right? Because... Uh, Whoa, look at all the enchantments in here. Isn't this interesting? But if we uh, if we put some books into some of these, I, I am curious about what's going to happen. It says put some books away. So I'm going to gonna pound out all the bookshelves with some books. Wow, isn't this wonderful? Look, look at me slowly filling this up. This is nice. Uh, but you can also measure some of these bookshelves, um, as we've maybe done here. Wait, wait, wait. It means to put the bookshelves in the floor, I bet. So yeah, here's something cool you can do. You can now hide books in the floor. I mean, it'll be obvious because of this pattern right here. But if we put books in enough of these, something will happen. Maybe, maybe, eventually. You know, I'm just going to fill up all the bookshelves of knockback books. By the way, yeah, I think putting enchanted books away is one of the coolest uses of this. I think, for instance, if you're collecting a lot of mending books, rather than storing your mending books in a chest like we do right now, it's so much more convenient just like, let's take all of that out, and have a knockback bookshelf, a mending bookshelf, etc, etc. You might have to then label that bookshelf, put a sign on there, or a hanging sign, uh, but I, I, I love the concept regardless. This is definitely something that inspires me in my survival world, just like the hanging sign. And that is something I quite like about this update, if we're going to give my meta thoughts on it. But we'll save that to the end to mention this is the recipe for the hanging sign. It doesn't use the normal, uh, you know, wood. It uses a full-on um, stripped oak log, so you got to bear that in mind, uh, with two chains. So this is a little bit more of an expensive recipe to get a little bit less sign, but you get a much better sign, which I think is a good trade-off uh, personally. Here's a fun one, by the way. Look at this block right here. Give it a little spin. Doesn't it look a little suspicious? Um, but um, yeah, if we if we look at the bamboo wood, it can be used to do something quite interesting. Um, which, by the way, actually, you know you know what else it can do that's interesting? Hear these noises. Oh, doesn't that sound good? Oh, it sounds so good, doesn't it? Oh, I just love the noises. Next up, though, we have the raft. The rest of this update, whether it's camels, chiseled bookshelves, or the hanging signs, even the creative inventory in the bundle, they're all adding real value, in my opinion, whereas the raft seem to be the dud feature in this update. It's just a boat that you can get on, and you can look at your medium-sized salmon because you're playing Java Edition, but it looks like you're doing uh, basically nothing besides a boat with a different texture, except it makes even less sense because with the different texture, you'd expect it to break easier. Something should be different about this boat, there is one thing I've spotted, a little secret about this raft, that makes it very slightly different, and that is unlike a regular boat, which is like very awkward to stand on, right? Like we're literally, if you look at what we're doing here, it's very strange and awkward, it doesn't feel quite right. Uh, you can stand on a raft just fine, you can walk around it, and so you could use these to help you cross a river, kind of a temporary river crossing if you will, and uh, as you can see, the, oh there's still, you know actually it doesn't work perfectly, it's almost an accident. <laughs> you know, that is not intentional, that is definitely just the texture being smoother. But yeah, the fact that there's something to it gives me some hope the raft is not going to be a dud feature. Um, because yeah, every update, uh, you can be really excited about just the very premises, but then when you r learn more about it, it's a little disappointing. This is not one of those. However, we have to talk about how they fixed a camel bug from five years ago, even though camels were just added to the game today. And this is one of my favorite little weird trivia things. Uh, it's from Nembon MC mentioning uh, that they actually um, fixed a Minecraft, but you know, they, they brought a Minecraft feature into the game so they could fix a bug uh, that that Minecraft feature had, even though it didn't exist yet. And this is just a joke referring to this bug report, where someone reported in 2017 that camels, uh, sorry, that they're riding their camels uh, would have their player face backwards. Obviously, they were just referring to, uh, you know, horses, but it's fun to see anyway that, like, ooh, what if that guy could predict the future? Uh, but in reality, he was actually probably very dumb. Or he's a time traveler. Or he's actually quite dumb. Speaking of dumb, uh, bamboo fences bother me the tiniest bit, right? So if we compare bamboo fences to bamboo, um, it's not like a huge difference. Uh, so this is this is bamboo over here. I guess we have to make it a little bit taller first. This is bamboo. This is a bamboo fence. As you can see, it's the same height. This is maybe the width of like four bamboos put together, I'd say. 
So why is it? If, if anyone can explain this to me, I'd love to hear your logic. Why can I stand on a bam bamboo fence, but I can't stand on a bamboo- Sorry, I can stand on a bamboo, but I can't stand on a bamboo fence. Like I- they're the same height of a block, but as I walk from one to the other, um, I- I know this is just how the fence is. I'm just saying, the more blocks you add to Minecraft, the more weird comparisons we get. Can you put a bamboo on a bamboo fence? You can't. Can you put a bamboo fence on a bamboo? You can. I mean, <laughs> that feels a bit weird, doesn't it? Anyway, yeah, speaking of weird, I think this update is filled with wonderful things. I really can't get over the noise uh, for the bamboo placement. I think good sound design and good visual design go together to make something quite cool. And every feature so far is pretty well polished. However, here's the question. How does this go from here? How, do, how does the update uh, continue onwards? And also the other question is, when is this coming out? And the best uh, guess we have from that is they don't actually know themselves. Again, like last year we had this theory but, uh, you know, they didn't know they were going to release the update because they'd work on all the features and see when it was coming out. But then they kind of pushed themselves to release it, which in what, what seemed like a long time, nine months, but they didn't get all the features done they wanted to. This time, by having no deadline of features, you know, they've added every feature they said they would now, besides the new skins, which I don't think they have to add inside the game. So, like, they've added every feature they said they would now, and now every single snapshot is a dive into the unknown. This could be the best opportunity in the world to be lazy. They can release no new features between now and 2023 and technically have fulfilled their update. But I imagine, my my hope at the very least, uh, it, my belief is that they're actually going to be uh, adding some features between here and there and just making sure that each new feature added is pretty good. Will that make a good Minecraft update? I think it, it, it's, it's interesting to say because we've had some really good planned themed Minecraft updates and we've had some really bad unplanned unthemed Minecraft updates. Um, this could go either way, but I've got some hopes for the future. I won't be making snapshots every single week or every single time one comes out, but I will be letting you know the latest that is happening, both here on Java and on the Bedrock Edition, which I primarily play. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, consider subscribing so you can see more Minecraft news and the weird perspective of the weird things inside the game you might not have seen otherwise. And if that's not enough, then allow me to show you down my secret trap door Sub to iBoxy Toy Cat. <laughs> you know what to do. It's on a bamboo sign. What can you do? Okay, goodbye. Um, is there no copper horn? Am I- am I forgetting that they removed- I guess there's no copper horn. My- my brain genuinely forgot about that one. Uh, I- I thought they only re- <clears throat> Let's cut that bit.